The Entity Field Build module is a site development tool for Drupal that is used in conjunction with the schema.org module to make site building faster, easier, and more consistent. Uh, I built the Entity Field Builder module, and I've used it now myself on several Drupal projects, and it's worked pretty well for me. So I'd like to invite other people to try it out and tell me what you think. Uh, I've created a Drupal installation profile that you can use to set up the demo I'm showing here. It's available on GitHub at the URL you see here. Uh, in addition to the modules included with a standard schema.org Kickstarter installation profile, it adds a couple of modules that I've written. One is called the schema.org cache module, and the other is the entity field builder module. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how this makes it easier and quicker to build content types and potentially other entity types as well. But first I want to explain a little bit about uh, schema.org and why uh, it's useful. Uh, schema.org has developed a set of uh, data types that uh, are intended to make it easier to build the semantic web. It creates a collection of schemas that webmasters can use to mark up their pages in way, ways that are recognized by major search providers. The challenge up until now in making data reusable in this fashion is that each website has its own data architecture and system for naming common objects. For example, many web pages, websites have pages that describe people. A person has certain attributes that are consistent regardless of what website you're trying to build. For example, people have names, they have addresses, biographies, etc. Many of these, these attributes are exactly the same or very similar from one website to the next, but they're not named in a consistent way, which makes it very hard for other computer applications such as search engines to scan a web page and accurately extract that information. Schema.org attempts to remedy this situation by creating a standardized set of data types with an accompanying set of properties that belong to that data type. So for example, let's take a look at the data type for software application. Software application is a subtype of creative work, which in turn is a subtype of thing. It inherits certain properties from things, such as a description, an image, and a name. It inherits certain properties from creative work, such as a rating, uh, an author, uh, a contributor, a creator, date created, date published, etc. And then it has certain properties that are specific to software application itself, such as application category, a device, a download URL where you can download the software, presumably, feature list, file format, uh, etc. Um, all told, schema.org has compiled several hundred data types like this, such as book, map, blog posting, person, job posting. They've defined more than 500 properties. The idea, therefore, is that using the schema.org module for Drupal and other modules, such as the Entity Fields Builder module that I've created, you should be able to quickly and easily use these definitions as starting points when defining your own content types and fields in Drupal. Uh, I, this approach potentially brings several advantages. Uh, one of those is better searchability. As I mentioned before, if you use uh, schema.org, you can automatically and easily add markup to web pages that enable search engines to better recognize the semantic meaning of the content on those pages. This provides search engine optimization. Major search engines such as Bing, Google, and Yahoo have agreed to recognize schema.org based markup in order to improve the display of search results. Another advantage is better interoperability. The schema.org module provides RDFA markup, which means that the content on web pages can be extracted automatically using the Sparkle query language or as Google rich snippets. In effect, other websites and applications can use your Drupal site not just as a source of web pages, but as a sort of database from which information can be queried 
and programmatically retrieved. Another advantage is easier site building. Uh, you can define multiple fields in your Drupal entities by just checking off choices from the schema. And I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. And then finally, uh, another advantage is less rework. If you use standardized schemas and naming conventions, it's going to make it easier to follow consistent naming conventions when defining entities and fields. These design patterns can therefore help reduce some of the inefficiencies that occur when Drupal developers are asked to do essentially the same thing on multiple client projects. For example, you might be asked to define a content type or, other or another entity named event. Usually the fields that you define for an event content type are very similar to the fields defined for an event that you might have built on a previous project. It would be nice if the code that was written when building that previous project could be reused. But sometimes this is not possible because of simple discrepancies in how fields were named or, or other trivial differences that become blockers to code sharing and reuse. And so one of the goals of, of schema-based design is to make just the naming conventions more consistent so that uh, you can reuse more of your code. So now here's a demo of how it works. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to structure content types. And first, let's just take a look at the basic page content type, just to remind ourselves of what the uh, fields user interface looks like uh, normally. Uh, you've got the option to add a You've got the op option to add a new field, so I'm going to try adding one. I'll call it sidebar text. I can select a field type. I'll call it uh, long text. And then I click save, and then I have to click through a couple of screens, save my field settings. I'll put in some help text. Sidebar text uh, goes in a separate block next to the main content, uh, set some other specifications, uh, save settings, and I've added one field. Now if I have 10 different fields I want to add to this content type, that's going to take uh, a while because I basically have to fill in three screens and hit submit for, for each field. So now let's go back to content types and see what it looks like to use uh, schema.org and the Entity Field Builder module to create uh, a new content type. <clears throat> I'm going to add a content type, name application, give it the de description, and application is a piece of software. Um, I'm going to give it a schema.org uh, data type. And I, I, I'll just type in application and see what pops up. And indeed, there is a software application data type from schema.org, so I will select that. Now I'm going to save and add fields. And this time, the, uh, the entity, or the, excuse me, the fields user interface uh, looks like the old fields interf user interface sort of on steroids. Um, it, uh, first of all, recognizes that the title corresponds to a schema.org entity called name. I'm going to associate the body content type with, uh, with description. And this sets up that nice uh, RDFA markup that search engines recognize for those fields. Uh, there's an existing uh, field definition that's, that corresponds with one of the properties that pertain to the software application data type called image. Uh, so I'm going to add that one as well and I just check a box for that. Uh, it shows me the help text on the same screen which I can modify, modify if I want. Uh, and, and let's say that I want to use the, the image as a logo so I can change the, lo the label. Upload it upload an image of the software applications logo. logo. And now I'm going to just add a few more fields. Um, 
one of which URL, but I'll, I'll name it website, uh, the main website of this application. Okay, so if the, if the software application was Drupal, the, the URL that people would enter there would be drupal.org. Uh, I've got all these different choices I can make. I only choose the ones that I want. And let's say I scroll down and select uh, copyright year. You'll notice it's pre-selected integer, but I can change that to a text field if I want. Um, I, I'm going to check that. I'll check creator as well. And I guess creator would, if it were, if Drupal were the application, would be Dries by Tart. Um, and what else should we add? Let's uh, just scroll through. Um, I will add keywords. Okay, so these, these might be uh, tags. So I'm going to select the term reference and an autocomplete term widget for tagging. Um, and maybe you want to do ratings of the reviews of the software. So I'll say that that is a long text. Uh, and again, each of these items has help text, which I can modify if I want. I'm not going to bother. This is a demo. Um, one of the nice things about this is it sort of reminds you of things that you might not have thought to include in defining your content type. Like maybe I wouldn't have thought to add a, a, a version field, um, but I see it so it reminds me that I want to include that. Um, and oh, in addition to the website of the of the software application, maybe there's a separate URL that I want to put in where people can go to download the, the, the site. And I'm going to make that a link field. And there's some other, th I'll just check file format, file size, um, and uh, I can, memory requirements, sure, that sounds good. Operating system, and um, screenshot, I'll make that a an image field. And I click save. And it has defined all of those fields for me. And now I can go um, uh, add content application and Drupal, the best software of all. And I can upload my file. The website link is right there and so forth and so on. Uh, and I think that took a fraction of the time it would take to define all these fields using the, the normal fields uh, user interface. So in addition to uh, making site building more consistent, this will hopefully make site building easier and quicker for uh, Drupal developers. So uh, thank you for watching. Good night.